What's up, y'all? It's Shuffle, and today we're doing another tier list. Well, tonight, I guess, but today when you see it. This is a Torchless hero tier list, so I'm going to rank the heroes as I feel they perform in Torchless for a variety of reasons. I have three tiers. I don't think I need more than that. I ran through this list a couple times in, like, drafting and stuff, and I think this is where I'm happy, but who knows? Anyway, before we get started, always do the cool stuff like liking, commenting, subscribing, hitting the bell. I never say hit the bell, but hit the bell, I guess. And then check out the box below for all the social media stuff like Discord, Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon. So, thank you so much for everyone that does that because we've met a lot of cool people this way. Very nice. And this video, like I said, we're going to talk about heroes in Torchless. And so, with Torchless as a game mode, you don't need to do these things, but it incentivizes these things. So, stuns are really good in Torchless. Speed is even more important in Torchless and then scouting so like the three s's i guess these aren't like these help a lot and if you're not you know some kind of god tier player then these will get you the most consistent results you know i'm going to talk about stuns and stuff like that but thick who i respect very much i think he's amazing and he was able to beat torchless without stuns so it's not like you need to do that but for us peasants like you and me they help a lot so we're gonna be talking about that and I'm focusing on that, and also I'm going to focus on some other stuff like acquisition of trinkets, how easy it is to enable their strategies, and uh, just give my general thoughts here. So, there's no left to right in terms of these rankings, it's just up to, like, top to bottom. So we have S, A, and B. Like I said, people might want a fourth tier, but honestly the power level is pretty close on the characters, so make that what you will like anyone that's in b is not unusable like everyone everyone's usable in torsless don't that, i think that's something i need to get across is one thing i hear a lot is that leper or arbalest you know very position heavy heroes are bad in torchless because you get surprised all the time but then they'll turn around and say that vestal and jester are amazing and those two characters are also position locked very hard so i don't i don't understand the logical inconsistency there so we're gonna talk about the characters and so we're gonna start with Abomination. I have my notes off screen, as always. That's why the white thing flashes up here. That is a Microsoft Word. Shoutouts to Microsoft, I guess. But with Abomination, where do we put Abomination? So Abomination is in B. What's weird is Abomination is really fast. He has a lot of HP. Those are great things to have. He has a self heal and a stress heal. But the thing is, Abomination is pretty much just a stun bot in Torchless because Transform, like the stress from Transform is too strong to consistently be able to press it just because like the numbers are so high so you're just bombing your entire team the entire like anytime you press transform it is ill-advised to do that so you're left with human abomination which is his best form but he's very trinket reliant so you need like basically padlock or transference and broken key if you don't have broken key then you know can't really do much you either have to fight thing from the stars which in torchless is way more dangerous and also you have to have the DLC. So if you don't have the DLC, you're kind of screwed. But Lock of Fury, I had a lot of good results with Lock of Fury just because of the extra speed. So I like that a lot. Antiquarian, we're gonna try and rank Antiquarian. It's kind of tough to do it. So we're gonna put her in A. Like her combat effectiveness isn't like the best. You know, she needs really good teammates around her. Um, her post isn't as advised in Torchless just because of the damage bump the enemies get. But her flash powder is really helpful, and being able to chip in on heals and stuff is fine. Like, one of the most interesting teams that I ran that worked well in Torchless was, I think, Abomination, um, Hellion, Antiquarian, and Plague Doctor. Like, there's no main healer, there's no stress healer on that team, but they had so much stun and control that uh, they could lock stuff down, and then Hellion could, like, systematically take down the enemies that she needed to. And Antiquarian, she was able to fit into that. She wasn't like an integral part of it, but Antiquarian can fit into a lot of teams and you need money. That's just the bottom line. You need money, especially in Torchless. You get more money naturally because of the low light like the entire time, because you get bonus loot. But for a while, you're gonna need to stress heal your people in the facilities that cost money and upgrades are way more important than they already are. And that also costs money. So Antiquarian gets really good there. Um, I do think she's great. Uh, Arbalest, I think I know where she goes. Yeah. So I'm going to put Arbalest in A. So Arbalest is a character that whenever I talk about my Torchless run that succeeded, I say that Arbalest and Leper were my two best performing units. And I mean that with like all, all honesty and all certainty. 
the the two of them, we'll talk about Leper later, but Arbalest, even though she has to be in like the back, and her damage is okay, her speed's kinda low, she gives everyone else speed with Marching Plan, which is amazing. She has percentage-based healing in camp, which is very strong. She also has a, just a good heal and battlefield bandage that doesn't require trinkets like Vestal. Like, it's a bit harder to get Vestal up and running. Like, it's nice to have Medic Screeves, but uh, Arbalest doesn't really need it. She just has to, like, double tap the same person, and then it boosts food healing, which food healing is very good in Torchless as well. And then Arbalest is incredibly durable. She's one of the highest HP units in the game. You put her in the back line, enemies get like 30% bonus damage or whatever in Torchless, I forget the exact number, and uh, she can take punishment. So she's really good for that. I like Arbalest a lot. And uh, Suppressing Fire is another thing. Suppressing Fire, very good in Torchless. Like one of the big things that happens is the enemy just crits you and the crits are so out of control because of the scaling that they're very dangerous. So being able to just hit Suppressing Fire the enemy may miss you because the accuracy drop is so high, and then they just won't crit you, I think. I think it's mathematically impossible for them to crit you um, in that case. In most cases. I have to double check the numbers. Or it's just very low. Either way, it's really good. I like that a lot. With, uh, who's next? Bounty Hunter? Bounty Hunter was tough to rank. I wanted to put him in B. I'm going to put him in A, just because he's decently fast enough. He has two stuns, which are really good. And the other cool part about Bounty Hunter is scouting. He has a decent scouting camp skill at three points. Three points is easy to swing. We can do that. And then he has a scouting class trinket, his green helmet. Those things are good. So he has pretty much two of our three S's. He has stuns and he has scouting. Really hard to argue that this character isn't at least decent in Torchless because of that. He has no like low light synergy like characters like Houndmaster have. But Bounty Hunter, you know, he can put out big damage. He can stun stuff and be disruptive enough. And buying turns in Torchless to either heal or take the enemy off their game plan so they're not just hitting you for no joke, like 35 stress, that's pretty good. Uh, Crusader, I feel bad about Crusader. I don't know if I should put him in B. I'm putting him in B and that's just because he's kind of slow. Like Crusader's speed is very punishing in Torchless because you want to be fast enough to deal with the enemy. And even though he can take a lot of hits and that's good, his damage is um, a bit unreliable in the early game like the hardest part of torchless is the first 10 weeks and maybe certain champion bosses if you fight chandler but uh with crusader you don't get accuracy at the start he really needs it so he can just whiff a holy lance and if he misses a holy lance that's bone core tier hitting you for like 25 stress like right after so crusader a bit disappointing in that regard um he definitely needs his heals and stuff and since he's so slow he can't really high roll the rest of your team and get extra heals out so the the slowness of him and the um the difficulty of healing just puts him in in b but if you can camp he has some really good camp stuff so that kind of saves him he's pretty tough to ra uh, rank I, I feel like he should be a in some cases but then i feel like he should be b in a lot of others it, it's tough so he could be in the middle i guess i don't know flagellants Flagellant is... Let me double check, actually. A. We're putting Flage in A. He could be S if it wasn't for the fact that he doesn't deal damage everywhere. I That's something I'm carrying over from my other tier list, which we're going to make part 6 soon. So get ready for that. And I think we'll do a premiere when we make that video. But Flagellant, he, he's not that reliable in, uh, <clears throat> in Cove because his bleeds don't stick as often, but he can still do it. But you you spend a lot of time in the ruins in Torchless because the ruins are very safe. So if you just need a break from, you know, Warrens in your Torchless run, just chill in the ruins. And Flagellant isn't that good there. And uh, if Courtyard could be Torchless, he'd be, he might be S-tier if, you, if you're doing Blood Moon just because, you know, he can go there and do stuff. But the good part about Flagellant is that he, he gets stronger when he gets beat up. And you will get beat up in Torchless. So he will get those exsanguinates, he will get those redeems, he will hit rapturous if you really care about that, and he's pretty fast on top of all that, so it's really nice to have someone that's durable, you know, his HP total is kind of low, but he can bounce it back up really quick, and so he can heal, he can take damage, he's fast, those are all just great things, and I guess he could stun if he dies, and you don't want him to do that, lost my train of thought there, but with Flagellant, the time he runs into trouble is that the damage is so high in Torchless, is he can hit Exsanguinate, you know, and get back up to like 60% or whatever HP. 
and then he can just get crit and he's back down to sub 40 and if he has to spam exsanguinate or redeem like back to back he gets way weaker just because he can't heal himself and he gets like very weak healing received at that point so as good as he is at taking punishment if he has to use his low health stuff repeatedly it's actually pretty bad for him and that's something that's a situation he can find himself in uh, quite often but he's still great a little flagellant grave robber i'm gonna put her in a there are a couple reasons uh for one she's fast enough to gank a rank three enemy so being able to lunge you have to crit usually and lunge and kill a cultist switch on turn one that's awesome that's huge that that wins in like any zone she has the cheapest camp scouting uh skill let's say perk but um yeah she has the cheapest camp scouting skill uh night moves is two points for 20 scouting that's fantastic she also has raider's talisman if you can you know find one and that's more scouting so any character that can give you a ton of scouting is really nice and she can keep herself alive with Shadow Fade. And uh, there, there's a negative to Shadow Fade because in Torchless, the damage is so high on basically everything that with Shadow Fade, you're forcing other people to get hit. When you're playing normally, this doesn't really matter because it's easier to recover. But in Torchless, it's kind of dangerous because you, you really have to think before you hit Shadow Fade. But otherwise, the ganks are there, the speed is there, she's got scouting. That's two of our three S's. And so I think that's good enough for an A rank. I like to Grave Robber a lot in my own torches swim. So we're gonna do a S tier character finally, probably no surprise. Hellion is absolutely nuts. She might be, I don't wanna call her the queen of torchless just because Hell's Hairpin is so freaking strong as a trinket. But like I, I did better in my attempts where Hellion got Hell's Hairpin than I did where I did not find one like early. So having Hell's Hairpin gives you accuracy, which accuracy is a huge issue at the start of Torchless, and then you get uh, crit chance on top of it, which both those things are great. And you get some small downsides like minus bleed and debuff resist, like those hurt, and they can be you know punishing, but they're not, not as dangerous as something else like uh, you know minus or like plus 20% stress received, something like that. So Hellion gets really strong and. The fact that one of her that her best torchless trinket is in the uh, the very rare pool means that you can find it off Apprentice Necromancer, and Apprentice Necromancer is a great boss for torchless runs because you can find your Blasphemous Vial, you can find your uh, Hell's Hairpin, and any other good orange trinkets out there. Focus Ring, like that Apprentice Necromancer is so important to a torchless run. I feel like that uh, it, it's interesting. Because, you, you know, he's a pushover in most cases, but, you know, having him in Torchless to give you a good trinket is nice to do. And Hellion, with her reach and her damage and her accu or her chance to get a great accuracy trinket off the bat, means having, like, two or three Hellions with, you know, a Hell's Hairpin in the trinket box is going to be smooth sailing for your front line for pretty much the entire playthrough. Like, you don't really need more than Hellion up front in Torchless, and I like that. I think it's great. So, Highwayman... This one hurt me. I'm putting Highwayman in B? Let me double check. Yeah. So, the thing with Highwayman, he has reach, he has really good damage, his starter trinkets are kind of bad, like his common and uncommon trinket are just not that good, so he needs neutral trinkets, so if you're not finding uh, Warrior's Cap or Reckless Charm or Focus Ring, then he kind of, he struggles. I'm not even gonna say kind of, he does struggle. And the other thing too is, Repost is, it's good. It's got 85 base accuracy, I believe, at all ranks, or it might just be uh, max rank, I can't remember. But with Repost, it, it's a normally really good mechanic because it breaks action economy, you just get extra turns, you get to light stuff up. If you kill stuff with Repost, you don't take the stress damage if they don't crit you. You know, the crit's the only way they can bypass that. And you don't take bleed and stuff like that, so it's really good to kill things with Repost. The issue is, you get hit. You do not want to get hit in Torchless. You want to not get hit as much as possible because the damage stats are so out of control that having a unit that does like 40% of his damage by getting hit is not cool. But he has really good camp skills and he's still perfectly viable. I took him to bosses. I took him to uh, like some, I had to have taken him to some end game missions. I can't remember which one's off the top of the head. So he can, he's fine. He can still do great. 
It's just that what makes him good before does is kind of like a, a penalty to him in Torchless, and that sucks. So, like I said, all these characters in B can still do fine, but Highway Man, you have to like play him differently, and uh, not, not too much differently, but you definitely have to account for other things. Like you have to you have to really assess the threat level of the enemies when you're playing Highway Man, and go. Do I pistol shot for three turns and then duels advance after that? Like th those are the choices you make with Highway Man. It's not duels on turn one every time, so that's why he's in B. I, think, I hope that sums it up. I feel like that's a decent way to do it. So Houndmaster, Houndmaster S here, Houndmaster MVP of no joke early Torchless besides maybe Plague Doctor. So spoilers with Plague Doctor, but with Houndmaster, it's because. His common trinket, the I forget what it is, Scouting Whistle, I think. He gets bonus scouting at low torch and trap disarm. Traps are brutal in Torchless, so he can deal with them. And then someone that can get just 20 scouting at low torch for free off one trinket, not two, one trinket, doesn't lower your speed, doesn't do any other garbage like you know Seer Stone does, um, doesn't give you bonus stress like the map. So be, someone that can just give you 20 scouting, like that, that's enough. That is enough for most teams to be okay and not get surprised every, like, three fights. You add the fact that he has a self-heal if he gets in trouble and a stun he can use from up front that can hit rank three. This character's solid, and he can reach the entire enemy team with, you know, his attacks. Um, you know, if you don't consider stun attacks, so, like, Hound's Harry and Hound's Rush, hit anything you want. So, Houndmaster, incredible in Torchless, very good hero. I, uh... It's kind of like Hellion, where if I didn't find Hell's Hairpin for her, it felt different. If I didn't find Houndmaster early, the runs felt different. So, I really like Houndmaster in Torchless. Jester, I was going to put an A. I'm going to put him in S. And the reason is, as we were saying, speed is so paramount in Torchless. So, getting a character that turbocharges your team on, uh, or for turn two, so they can just run over the enemies and kill, like, you know, two or three on turn two or whatever it is incredibly helpful and then he has stress healing so if he ever gets a stall at all which you can stall in torchless it's dangerous but at the same time you should be stalling so if you get like the the enemy tank like the plagic guardian and you just stun it and blight it and you just wait for it to die jester can just sit there and just pump out stress healing which is nice and those stress heals really do they come in clutch so keeping people off affliction you know early in torchless is very difficult especially you know like when you have no trinkets and you're in those first few dungeons and you know you're you're like afflicted by no joke fight three in some cases or four and jester can help deal with that a lot so jester really good like i, I don't think too highly of jester in regular play just because like the the battle ballad stack almost feels like overkill and a well-made team doesn't usually have stress issues especially if you can camp so jester's not as potent there like he's still great but he's not like I don't know. It's not as oppressive, it feels like. And uh, in Torchless, it, it's good. Like, the, the ability to just run over enemies and stress heal is... It's great. So, it's helpful. And I think it it's better than not having it. Leper. Leaper. Leper and A. Again, I'm here in the comments like, What? Leper gets thrown into rank 4 and he can't do anything. Yeah, and if Vestal hits rank 1, she can't do anything. If Jester hits rank 2 or 1, he can't do anything, right? So, once you handle the scouting question... Torchless becomes a lot more tame because you're not getting surprised every two or three fights and you're not getting crit for half your HP and then taking no joke like a hundred stress split across your entire team in like two turns. Once you're not dealing with that garbage, then Leper, really good. Very durable unit, hits really hard, ends fights quickly, and he has the best self heal in the game, which heals HP and stress. He also has camp skills that heal stress as well. So Leper can do a lot of things in Torchless, and I think he's very powerful for it. Like, there was, um, there's some boss fights I took him to. I took him to endgame missions. I, the, I'm not going to spoil, but one of the endgame missions is considered probably the hardest mission in the game. And I took Leper to that, and he freaking dominated. So Leper, amazing. Don't, don't sleep on Leper. It's just the fact that he... It, it takes him a minute to get rolling. You can't really take him for the first few weeks until you answer the scouting question and then get some accuracy. So if you can't do those things, he's usually sitting on your bench, but like about week 8, week 12, something like that, you can just start taking him out all the time if your run's going okay. And he'll he'll pay for himself. He's good. 
He's really good. Man at Arms, I'm putting in B. Man at Arms, great character, just too slow. And, uh, like having. He does give you accuracy. Bellow gets really good in Torchless. If you can actually get the surprise in Torchless and then just bellow the enemy team, you're actually set for the entire fight, which is pretty nice. But it's the fact that he doesn't really contribute too much on damage. Like, Jester can put out decent damage, and then you can finale. So, like, Jester can do stuff in Torchless. But Man at Arms, you know, he's durable, which is great. He can guard, which is really good. He has some pretty decent buffs. Don't bolster in Torchless, it's too slow. Just just Bellow. Bellow gets way better in Torchless. And um, he just doesn't do quite enough damage. And you don't want to... Like, you don't want someone that's taking damage. You want to be preventing damage. So you need, like, Rampart and Bellow. Those are probably the two best moves on his bar in Torchless. So if you're not, like, if you're not stopping enemies from hitting you, you shouldn't be guarding. Like, guarding is just too slow. It's too slow of a mechanic. Sometimes you need to. There are boss fights where you need to. But for the most part, he's too slow of a character to, uh, to get it done. But him having a stun and Bellow are pretty much the saving grace. Musketeer is a reskin Arbalest. That's it. I'm not dealing with it. I'm putting her there just so I don't get comments about it. Oh, my voice cracks, but so I don't get comments about it. Uh, Cultist, we're putting him in S. A Cultist, very awesome unit in Torchless. All of his stuff that, you know, destroys your Torchlight, his skills like Hands from the Abyss and his camp skills and stuff, don't matter. Just don't exist just because, you know, the torches aren't there, so you don't have to worry about Torchlight. So Hands from the Abyss gets really good. He's a point faster than Vestal, which doesn't seem like it matters, but actually matters a bit. So, the fact that he's a bit faster than her means he can be more consistent in stunning. He can sometimes high roll rank 3 and stun Cultist Witch right away, which is great. You get one speed quirk on him, and he's going to be, you know, he's going first in most fights, you know, against especially against the enemy backline, except like Pelagic Shaman, which is just way too fast, but that's, you know, something else. He's another character that one of his best trinkets is orange, which means we can find it from a boss. So he can get his Demon's Cauldron from uh, an early boss fight. Again, shoutouts to Apprentice Necromancer. And if you can get him the Demon's Cauldron and like a Steady Bracer, he's good until like Champion. It's pretty cool. And then, you know, at that point your teams are better built up and you have different trinkets at your disposal. But those, those are just good enough. The other thing too is Sacrificial Stab hits hard enough. It's nice. And his heal is potentially good enough. So it's a bit rough to use it in the early the early game. I'm pretty sure he killed one of my units before. Like a shield breaker, he hit you know zero bleed and she just bled out. So I'm pretty sure he did that to me. And uh, with the heal, like Vestal kind of struggles in Torchless because her heals aren't strong enough, especially early, to keep up with the damage. But Occultist can high roll and actually keep up with the damage. So his healing output, even though it's inconsistent, he can actually hit the numbers that he needs to to keep up. And that's, that's good. That's like... That, that's something you want, where the damage is so punishing and Occultist can actually somewhat, you know, maybe like 30% of the time, he can actually like one-to-one -one the damage, and that's it's fantastic. So, I love Occultist. I ran him so much in my Torchless, my Torchless files, so I think he's really good. And his Crimson Quartz set, also good in Torchless. Um, let's see what else does he have. I think that's it. Very versatile units, so he can also use vulnerability hex to lower dodge on the enemy when you don't have accuracy trinkets, that's also worth mentioning. Plague Doctor, S tier, and PD, she's very trinket reliant, which is something I hate, but she's fast enough to get it done, and she's got double stun, which, like a double stun from PD prevents like 60 stress. And what what more can you do with that, you know? Then she's fast enough to cure Bleat and Blight. Uh, bleat, Bleat? Can't even say it. Bleed and Blight. So, PD, really good. Again, one of our favorite types of heroes where her best trinket is a boss drop. So, Apprentice Necromancer can set her up for the entire playthrough. Uh, is there anything else? I don't know. You don't really need Incision or even Noxious Blast. You just need literally Blinding Gas. And that button does a lot of work in Torchless. So, once you get that and like a Speed Quirk, she's going to dominate. SP, I think is A? I could put her in B. I'm not going to though. So, Shieldbreaker has a very slow early game. A lot of my early deaths in Torchless across my like all my files was Shieldbreaker. So, level 0, very scary to take this character out. Like, she can just die to spiders <laughs> very easily, which is sad. And uh, But spiders are pretty threatening in Torchless. I don't want to get it twisted. 
when she gets to level one though, she's okay. When she gets to level two, she's chilling. So if you get her to level two, get a couple, you know, decent, like neutral trinkets. Her class ones kind of suck early on. You know, she's fine. Then you get her custom armor. You know, after like the uh, the fifth nightmare or whatever it is, and uh, then she's fine. Like she's pretty much good after that. And if she makes it to champion, she's gonna be what you're used to, where puncture just you know obliterates backliners by disrupting them. Pierce hits really hard. Adders, you know, destroys stuff. And uh, she has block against, you know, attacks that do like 30% bonus damage. So a lot of good stuff with Shieldbreaker, just really tough keeping her alive for the first few weeks until she's, you know, level 1 or 2. Well, you get level 1 after one mission, but when she gets to 2, I think she takes off. Vestal, this might be the hot take. I want to, God, I want to put Vestal in B. Let me look. Oh, God, I even have B on my list. Can I, can I do it, dude? I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. Oh, I want to. I want to so bad, man. So, the reason I want to is because she's kind of slow. She doesn't have any, like, scouting utility. She has a stun, which is good. Her healing, especially early game, which is the hardest part of Torchless, cannot keep up. She needs a lot of stalling to fix your team, and that's just because the enemies hit so hard. Like, you will get two tapped in Torchless. A Pelagic Grouper, which I, you know, the Cove Lepers, that, um, uh, the Blue Fish with the Swords and Spears, they can one-tap some characters from full in Torchless, especially, like, level zeros. Vessel can't really do much about, like, she can heal them for, like, four after that. God, I want to put her in B. I, I can't justify it, though, and that's just because Divine Comfort is so good. Even at level one, when it is a garbage one to three heal, the fact you can just take more than one person off of Death's Door. It's always going to come back to that with Vestal. The fact you can take more than one person off Death's Door at the same time is too freaking good. Like, that alone makes her A. I want to put her in B, but I can't do it. I, I can't. I can't. So, I'm going to put her in A. Um, she, she needs her healing trinkets. She doesn't really get access to them early. Junius head's very dangerous when you first get it, just because you don't have, like, decent teams or, like, a fast plague doctor to keep stunning stuff, then she can just take a bunch of stress. That's not okay. But she's, she'll do the job. Like, between the, the decent stun and the AoE heal, that's worth a spot. So, I guess we can put her in A. But, I think that's it for this one, right? So, there's nothing else. Uh, let's see. Okay. But yeah, that's it for this one. So, thanks for watching. Uh, next time, like guides and stuff. I just I really wanted to do a tier list because my friend my friend made one because he's doing Final Fantasy 14 videos and uh, he made a, a tier list. I was like I want to make one, so here we are. But yeah, with this I, I think this is solid. I think this is solid. I know there's gonna be some disagreements, and that's fine. You know I, I welcome them, and uh, yeah I, I hope I explained my choices you know well enough. Like the the ones in the top, they're fast enough to either end fights quickly. Or they have amazing orange trinkets, or they give you a ton of scouting, like Houndmaster. Um, the ones in the A tier, like once, like they're, they're pretty solid from start to finish, except for like Lepers, kind of rough for the early weeks, and the same with uh, Shieldbreaker. But those those characters are good. And then B, like I said, B is completely fine and usable. I use Abomination a lot to great effect. I use Crusader on a lot of teams. I use ha uh, Highwayman a lot, and he did fine. So it's not that B is just garbage, okay? It's just that their uh, their playstyles don't quite mesh the best with Torchless. So you want you want preventative measures more than like recovery stuff in most cases, or you just you just don't want to like do a bunch of stress to your team in the case of Abomination. So I'm gonna stop talking. That's it for this one. So thanks for watching. Next time, more stuff. Keep it tuned here, and uh, see you later.